All right, so we're back. We finished mounting the final panels inside. So we mounted one in the back. And let's just spin this sucker around. And one in the front there. So what's going to happen here is that we're going to have ultrasonic sensors all around the front sides. Let's see. So the front sides and on each side and as well as the back. So that'll be a total of six ultrasonic sensors giving us almost a 360 degree uh, visibility. Um, we could add further uh, panels to the back here, um, but from my experience it's kind of overkill. You really don't need that many, but it wouldn't hurt to do it just to give you a better, greater sense of awareness you'd have complete 360 uh, view of what's on. So next step will be in the bumper sensors. Now these bumper sensors front here in front of the infrared sensors and what will happen is that when we install those they're going to be they're basically big buttons so three buttons one here here and here so when this device is moving forward and it bumps into something it's going to know hey I've hit something let me back up and that's what these are going to be for so let's just move this to the side and let's open up this package to see what they look like Okay, so they come with a cable, and this is made of metal, and it has some kind of uh, spring inside there. It just basically looks like a button with some springs, and these screws stop it going all the way through. And you have two mounting holes in the bottom, so it can move about easily, in and out, down, up, doesn't matter. Either way, we'll know that something actually impact of the unit. I have three of these. Okay. I'm going to put these off to the side. There we have three. And these are going to be mounted. The same screen using a 40 sure of. They're going to be mounted. Let's turn this around here. Sure enough, it'll be mounted right there. So let's get some screws here. We're going to need six. So there's one, two, Some of these actually had some washers stuck on them, so I had to take them off. Four, five, six. And again, we'll be mounting this from the bottom. Now, one thing I'm noticing is that there are a lot of holes all about this unit. So I think I've just noticed here that this is uh, something for line tracking. So if we wanted to install some line trackers, they have spots here on the bottom for it. And in fact, there's two more in the back. So you could probably use the uh, DF robot line tracking uh, sensors. Um, I'll check the my sensor kit to see if I have any of those hanging around, so we can check those out. Okay, this is going to be hard doing it this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it on its side, like so, and just position this in such a way that we can get in there. Again, don't tighten it too much because we need to align the other hole. And there you have that. Oops, just came undone there. Let's do it one more time.
Alright, so that's in place. Give this first one another few more turns, and we're good to go. So we've mounted one there. Now let's continue on with the next ones. And the final one. It's hard to put screws, so let's get one more over here. Let's see if I can uh, put this on the side here. So that's now mounted. So as you can see, there's a the finished product. Not too bad. Pretty simple design. And I'm going to plug in these cables for now so I know where these go and I don't uh, confuse these with any other cables we might have down the road. Might have been a good idea to actually plug in first, then uh, mount this to the chassis, but it uh, doesn't really matter either way. The contacts here are easily accessible, so it take much effort to put these in place here. mounted here. Now if we refer back to the manual, we are complete. Now there are some remaining items that I'll touch base with now, which I'm not sure if we actually skipped over or they're just not in the manual. 
Sure enough, I don't see them here. So that's no concern because it's obvious where they're going to go. So going back to, let's see actually. So they have a couple images here. What they actually did was we have these uh, hand tilt brackets and they actually mounted them to the back side here, back here and here. I'm going to leave this as extra for now until I figure out what I want to do with this. We need to plan out basically what we think we need. Um, the other part that we need to mount is the battery holder. So that is not in the manual, but we're going to go ahead and try to figure that out now. So let's just move it to the side so we can check out the uh, contents of this. So this is the battery mounting plate. And it comes with uh, two long, sorry, four long screws. And this here. Hmm. Not exactly sure how we're going to mount this just for now. So what I'm going to do this. I'm going to leave this out for now. We're going to come back to it. And let's see, is there anything else we can address while we're here? So it looks like we've finished building the kit. As you can see, it's, uh, it was pretty straightforward for us to build. Now the next step will be us deciding what we're going to be doing with the kit. So how are we going to interface with all these sensors? What sensors are we going to use? Things of that nature. One thing I did leave out that I'm not going to show because it's just too tedious, but it's basically these ultrasonic uh, rubber gar uh, grommets. So basically each one of these circles will go inside of each one of these holes. And that's to protect the sensors and any, also any cabling from fraying. And it also gives a nice aesthetic look to the actual unit. We hope you've enjoyed this and we'll be back soon to talk about uh, how we're going to build out this unit and what sensors and what programs we're going to write, what controller boards we're going to be using and whatnot. Again, this is a great platform if you want something that's expandable and robust and has a lot of abilities. Um, it's great for indoors. Uh, you could possibly use this outdoors because of the caster wheel and the big knobby tires that are ro uh, rollerblade like, so you should be able to take that. A um, couple of nice things they've added are these sensors here for the bumpers. Another nice feature is this power switch back here. So you have these power switches. I believe this is reset. This is your on, off. And this is a, a power plug that you can actually plug in that they actually included with the kit. Where is that? Which is this part right here. This part will just go in there, screwed in tight, and it's done. Take care and watch out for our next videos.